Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, lads? What's going on, my people, my homies? It's all days of MMA here. You already know what we're doing, lads. We're going to do the main card. The main card for this weekend. The predictions for the main card this weekend, I repeat. Holly Holm versus Mario Bueno Silva taking place this weekend. And, yeah, like I said, man, I just did the predictions for the prelims on, on my channel. I just up uploaded them, so go check it out. I can barely fucking speak. But, anyways, yeah, go check out the prelims, man. But... We've got the main card to look at, and it's a very intriguing main card, I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty, you know, pretty iffy main card, but we'll work with it, so let's go. First fight on the main card is going to be Terence McKinney versus Nazim Sadikov. Now, I think majority of people are going to be rocking with Terence McKinney, yeah. I'm actually going to go with Nazim Sadikov, guys. I... Yeah, man, I really like Nazim Sajikov. I think he's really good, and I think he's a, a prospect at the, in the lightweight division. I'm not going to lie. He's 8-1. and one. You know, he had a really good win on the Contender Series, and like I said, I um I did a prediction for Evan Elder versus Gennaro Valdez on the prelims, so go check it out, but speaking of Evan Elder, he fought Nazim Sajikov. They both fought... Uh, earlier th earlier this year and Nazim ended up winning by Dr. Stoppage but man you know like he looks really good dude he has amazing stand up you know I feel like his ground game is um good enough to to deal with Terence McKinney the only problem that I have with Terence McKinney winning this fight is that he can get it done within the first minute of the first round in my opinion and I'm just gonna say how it is Terence McKinney cannot take a shot you know with all due respect to the man, he cannot take a shot at all. If I had to, if I had to rate uh, like worst poker faces in UFC history, Terence McKinney would easily be up there. You know, the guy does not like getting hit. Like when he gets hit, you can just see him crumble. Like he does just not like getting touched. And the Zim Sajikov is a guy you don't really want to get hit by. And I just I can see as the fight keeps going on in the second and if it makes it to the third round, the Zim, the Zim will pull the pace on drastically and wear down Terence McKinney. And, like I said, dude, Terence McKinney's only best chance is in the first round, the first two minutes, where he starches um, Nazim Sadiakov, you know, like he did with Mafavola and almost finished Drew Dobis. So, you know, Terence McKinney's probably going to be one of the scariest guys, you know, in the first round that you ever have to fight in the UFC. And that's really about it, you know. As long as you make it past the second round with McKinney, you know, you're completely fine. So... I have a lot of faith in Nazim Sajikov. I'm going to be rocking with him to get the job done. I'm going to go uh, second round TKO or third round TKO. And if not, I can see uh, Nazim Sajikov getting a, a dominant decision. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to count out Terence McKinney. I think Terence McKinney could submit Nazim Sajikov or even knock him out. But yeah, man, you know, a lot of people are rocking with Terence McKinney. But I, I want to pick Nazim Sajikov. I've got a lot of faith in the guy. And I think he's a, a future prospect that lightweight. So... Nazim Sajikov is my pick. Moving on. Ottoman potato bag fucking Roy Cheetah Azaita versus Francisco Prado. Now, I just wanna like I just wanna say it how it is, bro. Ottoman Azaita is just trash, dude. This guy is straight trash, you know what I mean? His wins in the UFC are against guys who aren't even like in the UFC anymore and they're just horrible fighters that he fought. And I feel like his time is done in the UFC, you know, I feel like everyone has their little stint when they fight in the UFC, and I just, I just think he's, he's done, man, you know what I mean, with all due respect, he got KO'd viciously in his last fight against Matt Favola, and Francisco Prado, you know, he, he made his debut against Jamie Malarkey in Australia, which is a tough ask for anyone to do, and I thought he looked alright, you know, he didn't, he didn't look bad at all, you know, Malarkey just, Malarkey just made the right decisions during the fight, and, um, cruise to a unanimous decision, but Prado did look good, man, Francisco Prado is a finisher, um, a lot of his, a lot of his wins are finishes, literally, he's got a lot of submission and knockout wins, so, man, I'm gonna have to put my faith in Francisco Prado, dude, I think he's hungry, um, you know, obviously, rooting from Argentina, you know, the guy is gonna want this win really badly, and I just question the, I just question, you know, Ottoman Azaita's ability, you know, is, does he still want it as bad as this kid does, you know what I mean? This kid fighting out of Argentina, you know, Francisco Prado, I just don't think he's playing around, and I honestly can see him coming out in the first, ro first round and just trying to starch Ottoman and Zaita. so I'm genuinely looking forward to this fight. I'm definitely going to pick Francisco Prado by knockout. Um, I'm going to say second round knockout, and if not, I think he can get a decision where he displays all of his skills and looks really good, so 
You already know who I'm rocking with, guys. We're going to go with Francisco Prado. Next up, Norma Dumont versus Chelsea Chandler. I don't really I don't really want to put too much like effort and time into this fight, if I'm going to be honest with you. Norma Dumont, you know, is a household UFC women's fighter. You know, she's been around the UFC for a while. She's got wins over Felicia Spencer, Aspen Ladd. You know, Danielle Wolf and Carol Rose. So, you know, solid, all solid fighters. So, she is a great fighter herself. Ranked the number two featherweight uh, in women's MMA, which really doesn't mean anything, to be honest with you. Chelsea Chandler is 5-1. and one, And I just want to say how it is. You know, she's... She just... As impressive as it is how she's fought, like, a bunch of people that are undefeated, you know, and she's beat them, like... You're, you're like taking Norma Dumont, you know what I mean? And she's no joke. And I just don't have a lot of faith in Chelsea Chandler, you know what I mean? She beat um Georgia Stollery Yanko, who's like, you know, an absolute can. Really, really bad. You know, you should be finishing her in the first round. So there's just not much to look at, you know, when it comes to Chelsea Ch- Chelsea Chandler. And I'm going to just have to pick Norma Dumont. I'm going to go by submission. I do have a really bad feeling, though, that uh Chelsea Chandler could get it done. Let's see the percentage. 80% of people are rocking with uh, Norma Dumont. That's fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I'm going to go with Norma Dumont by decision. Just a, a very um, dominant decision. But I do think that this fight will be a bit closer than people think. I'm not going to lie. So yeah, I'm going to rock with Norma Dumont regardless. Moving on, lads. Current main event. This is a very intriguing matchup. Jeez. We've got the turtle. John Young Park, the Iron Turtle versus Albert Derive. So, 16 and 4 is the Rive, and 16 and 5 is John Yon Park. Um, I'm I'm very intrigued with this matchup, without a doubt. You know, it's a uh, these guys are two grapplers, so I have a feeling that this is going to be a striking matchup, and I want to see who majority of people are rocking with. Derive, okay. So I think so. I think like the way that I'm looking at this fight is recency bias you know i feel like a lot of people are riding high on albert derive because he's a great grappler and you know he's he's russian and he and his last name's derive and he's like he looks scary and all these things but i honestly got a lot of hope for john young park you know i feel like in this fight i could definitely see albert derive controlling the pace the whole time but you know john young park is is no joke dude you know he's been making his name for the ufc for a while you know he's been taking out a lot of guys outside the top 15 in the middleweight division uh, he's a great grappler himself, you know, he can he can control you really well in positions, and once he establishes control, like, he's just not going to let go of you, so, as much as I like Albert Derive, you know, and how good of a grappler Derive is, I just can't take that loss to Joaquin Buckley seriously, you know what I mean, like, with all due respect, and, yeah, man, I just, I could sound like a fool, you know, Albert Derive could come out and, you know, absolutely destroy John Young Park, but I'm gonna I'm a put boy, like, I'm gonna put faith in my Korean boy, straight up, you know, I can see uh, John Young Park controlling the pace and getting a, a split decision win, getting a split decision win or a unanimous win, who knows though, I'm not gonna lie, Abu Derive is, uh, this is very close to the Abu Dhabi timeline, you know, fighting in October, and I feel like even if he doesn't win, they could rob they could rob John Young Park, you know, and give it to Albert Derive. And I feel like if it goes to a judge's decision, they're going to somehow really want to give it to Albert Derive purely off the fact that, you know, he might want to fight in Abu Dhabi and just all that type of fucking rigged bullshit. You guys know what I'm talking about. Come on, that's a whole different type of video, but yeah. This is a tough-ass pick, dude, but I'm picking John Young Park, man. Fuck it. Like, it is what it is, dude. You know, he's really solid, this guy, John Young Park, and... Yeah, man, I'm excited, you know, I'm, I'm, honestly, I think Derive is going to destroy him, but I got faith in John Young Park, man, so I'm rocking with him, straight up, the Iron Turtle, let's get it, baby. And we've made it, lads, we finally made it, we finally made it to the main event, you know, not really looking too forward at all to this shit, but, um, Holly Holm versus Mario Bueno Silva, so, I'm not even going to lie with you guys, um, as much as I like to pick Holly Holm, I'm actually going to go with Mario Bueno Silva. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with Ma- Mario Bueno Silva. You know, I, I really have a lot of um hype and a lot of hope for Mario Bueno Silva. She's she's very solid, you know, I'm not going to lie. She's got some solid wins over guys. You know, she, um, she's got submission wins. She's been finishing people, you know, whoever she fights. And uh, she's just a submission threat all around. You know, I feel like her grappling might be a bit too much for Holly Holm. 
And her losses, her only losses, you know, are to like Manon Fiore, who's a very solid fighter herself. And I love Holly Holm, but she's 41, dude. Like, look at that. She's almost 40, 42 years old. And if Caitlin Vieira can make a really close fight with you and, and beat you, I'm going to have to pick Mario Buena Silva to do the same. You know, I just think that Mario Buena Silva is hungry. She's 10 years younger. You know, I feel like youth is on her side. And having a, a very good ground game like her, I just think she's dangerous, man. I think she's a, a dangerous underdog. I would love to put money on her, but I just, I'm not going to put money on fucking, I'm never going to put money on a women's fight. But yeah, man, you know, Holly Holm nowadays, she seems to want to always grapple. You know, she wants to prove a point in her grappling that she's a good grappler, but she doesn't really need to, you know, she's a striker at heart. And I can just see it, you know, if they go to the ground and they decide to grapple, Mario Buena Silva will take the job easily. So that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap it up with Mario Buena Silva. I hope you guys enjoy my predictions, man. Let me know in the comments below, eh? And stay safe, guys. Enjoy your night. Take care.